Thank you very much, everybody, for joining us uh, to this webinar. As uh, um, Srinivas has already introduced me, my name is Diego Copiello. I'm Product Marketing Manager of Actron, the uh, acoustic software uh, developed uh, by FFT, an MSC software company. Uh, today, uh, the uh, webinar is uh, um, focused on tuning acoustic quality of audio devices with simulations. So this is the agenda of today. I will give a brief introduction of the problem. Uh, then uh, we will see what are the key ingredients for vibroacoustic simulations, as uh, for this kind of application, we will use uh, Actron Vibroacoustics to demonstrate this. We will see a couple of example applications for these uh, topics, namely um, a microphone and a loudspeaker. And then I will give a demo about a loudspeaker sensitivity analysis, where we will see how to use the software and how to post-process the results in order to get um, a sensitivity analysis of a loudspeaker. And finally, I will give some brief conclusions to this webinar. So let's start, and let's start on why we need acoustic simulations in this field. Well, first of all, we need to rapidly assess the design changes in the development process of this type of um, applications. This is because we need to limit uh, expensive prototypes and testing, and because we need to reduce the market. But this is just one reason. A second reason is because we need to assess the complete system performance. Indeed, loudspeakers and microphones are installed on different systems, and their performance will um, depend on the overall system integration. Let's make an example. We see here a car, an interior of a car, where we have a loudspeaker installed on the car door. And basically, the acoustic performance of this loudspeaker will depend uh, due to the installation, will depend on the installation, and basically will depend on the acoustic cavity that is in the back of the loudspeaker, as well as on the uh, fact that the plate that is installed on, the carrier plate of this loudspeaker, will vibrate at, uh, as well, together with the, loud, with the loudspeaker, when the loudspeaker is excited. So we can use the Actron software to the same. What is the, uh, Actron? Actron is a wide acoustic software suite. It allows to do acoustics, vibroacoustics, and air acoustic simulation, or even the most complex ones that are the aerovibroacoustic simulations. It is based on the finite elements and the infinite element method. And it is easy to use thanks to a dedicated graphical user interface and thanks to its uh, scripting capabilities. As this is a finite element uh, code, the typical simulation process is based uh, as is outlined here. So we start from the CAD geometry, we build the mesh and the model, then we compute the model, and finally we post-process the results. Actron is widely used in many, many applications. It is used in tra transport and vehicles, so for example, in aeronautics, aerospace, or automotive, or uh, uh, machinery for factory, or even consumer goods. And indeed, Actron is used to uh, design loudspeakers, or even just parts of loudspeakers, or it is used for hearing aids, or even uh, for designing consumer electronics, as loudspeakers and um, microphones are installed in those uh, applications. These are some of our customers. So as you see, Actron is widely spread across the industries. And you can see some example of our customers that are using Actron for designing consumer goods products. Now we can see what are the key ingredients for vibroacoustic simulation. As I said earlier, basically to design audio appliances, we will need Actron vibroacoustics uh, to, to do that. First of all, what we need is to simulate the acoustic field that is radiating from a certain object. And to this aim, we need to um, compute both the near field, and this is done by means of finite elements domain. And we need to know what is the sound pressure level, for example, outside the finite element domain. So for example, at one or more meters of distance from a certain, certain object. And to this aim, we can use infinite elements or the uh, APML. As I said, we need to do that in order to get the solution in the far field, but also we need these uh, components in order to, to have a non-reflecting boundary condition. 
For example, here we see uh, a loudspeaker. We will have an acoustic wave that is generated on top of this loudspeaker. It will propagate in this direction, and basically what we want is this acoustic wave to go out of this domain and not being reflected uh, inside uh, on the other direction. The typical result that we will have then is the acoustic pressure both in the near field and in the far field. But a loudspeaker, for example, it's a pure vibroacoustic problem, so we need also to solve the structural dynamics together with the acoustic problem. So the same action uh, as a wide library of structural elements. So for example, it allows viscoelastic solid elements, shell elements, beams, or stiffness, or also connecting uh, components such as rigid bodies, strings, or even point masses. Then, if you are used to use uh, Nastran as, uh, as code, Actran also allows to import and convert a Nastran, stru a Nastran structural model into Actran. The typical results that we get from this kind of uh, simulation concerning the structural dynamics are the structural displacement or acceleration or even the stress. Moreover, we get the energy that is dissipated in each layer or in each material or in any specific area defined by the users. And this allows us to get the energy, ba energy balance statement. During the, this webinar, during the demo, I will show an example for concerning the loudspeaker about this. Then we need, in this kind of application, uh, more complex models, specific models. For example, we need viscothermal dissipation models, as uh, when we have small cavities, the acoustic waves are ro locally slumped, uh, slowed down and dumped out. For example, this happens in headsets or in loudspeakers, as between the voice coil and the magnet, we have very thin slits, and in this case, in those areas, we have a strong effect of the viscothermal dissipation. Then we might want to add some porous materials, for example, in the back cavity of a loudspeaker. And to this same action features uh, porous elements or porous uh, material models. They are all based on the biot model. And action features both extensive poroelastic models and simplified models. Concerning the extensive models, uh, these kind of models allow to full allow the full modeling of the skeleton, the fluid, and the skeleton-to-fluid interaction, whereas the simplified models uh, allow us to uh, quickly model this kind of materials. And we have both the rigid porous and the lump porous, and even some semi-empirical models, such as the Delany and Bazley model or the Mickey model. Then, in this kind of application, we can choose different solution approaches. We will see some different uh, application of this. The first approach is the direct frequency approach. With this approach, we will have the direct solution of the unknowns of the problem. Namely, we will have the solution of the solid displacement and the acoustic process, uh, pressure. Solid displacement for the structure, the acoustic pressure for the uh, acoustic domain. The advantage of this uh, approach is that we can assign uh, a specific damping to each material. And also, we can use porous materials with this approach. Another uh, possibility is use the model frequency approach in order to compute and include the structural modes. So we will know both the structural modes and the eigenfrequencies of the structural modes. And what we can do is assign a specific damping for each mode. We can then couple these two different approaches by means of the other uh, hybrid approach. In order, so with the hybrid approach, we will include the structural modes, whereas the fluid is solved directly. In this case, the unknowns are the structural modes, model participation factor, and acoustic pressure. So for example, if we have uh, a loudspeaker in a, uh, in a car audio application, what we can, can do is to model um, the, uh, the acoustic cavity inside with the direct approach, whereas the structure uh, can be modeled by means of the structural modes, enabling us to save uh, a lot of degrees of freedom for the structure. Okay, we can see a couple of examples now. The first example I will give is concerning uh, a microphone characterization. The objective of this example is to evaluate the acoustic performance of a simplified microphone using indicators such as the frequency response 
and, and directivity. Moreover, we want the results across a wide range of frequencies, namely between 50 Hz and 10,000 Hz. And here on the right, you see a breakdown uh, of the structure of the microphone. How was it modeled? Well, the model includes some specific features in Akron. We see here uh, 3D, the 3D model of the microphone, and here the actual um, magnification of the model of the microphone itself. The model in this uh, case features some specific uh, models, such as the viscothermal dissipation in the narrow gaps. We use some porous material for modeling the filter uh, and the damper of the microphone. And then we use in the far field a circular array of noise sources at one meter from the microphone itself. The objective was to know what is the sensitivity of the diaphragm to, uh, versus the position of the specific noise source. And this is, for example, the first uh, result that we have of this kind of application. This is the directivity of the diaphragm mean square velocity uh, at 450 hertz. So what does this diaphragm, diaphragm uh, tell us? Well, basically, at zero degree, we have a specific noise source, and we have the response of the diaphragm, the mean square velocity of the diaphragm in terms of response, but it's here. So we see here that at zero degrees, we have the maximum response of the diaphragm. Whereas if we put the uh, noise source at 90 degrees, at one meter uh, from the microphone at one, uh, 90 degrees, we'll, we will have a lower response of the, uh, of the um, diaphragm of this, at this frequency. Another typical output from uh, Arctran is the uh, diaphragm, for example, the frequency response function. So in this case, it is the diaphragm mean square velocity spectrum. And what we see is that at specific frequencies, we have some peaks of this spectrum. And these peaks are directly linked to the modes of the diaphragm. So we can understand the effect of each mode the, uh, to the diaphragm response. Another example is the uh, loudspeaker 3D, uh, a loudspeaker model that I want to show you. Basically, we wanted to understand uh, and evaluate the loudspeaker acoustic performance when it is installed on a specific uh, cabinet or box. We selected three different configurations. One is the speaker driver alone and two other configuration of the uh, box that is installed here. This is a schematic view of the, uh, of the model. It's a symmetric model. We see here in blue uh, the speaker driver, whereas in red here we see the vented box, uh, external walls and internal walls. Basically, in this case, it's a long transmission line as the acoustic can follow this path and then can be redirect towards the front of this, uh, of this object. The short trans transmission line, which is the third case that we wanted to analyze, is basically uh, the, we removed the internal walls of this, uh, of this model. So there, there are no more hard walls inside this, uh, this box. In light gray, we see the acoustic domain, so where, uh, where we will compute the near field, on top of this acoustic domain, we have the infinite elements, and by means of them, we could um, detect the far, field, uh, um, the far field noise by means of this virtual microphone array. One result is concerning uh, the loudspeaker, uh, the solid displacement of the driver. So we are here at analyzing at 1,000 hertz. So if we look at this video, we see basically the piston mode of the uh, speaker driver, and everything works correctly. But if we move up in frequency up to 1,500 hertz, what we will see is that at the surround, this corner is in opposite phase with respect to the other corner. So this is an higher order mode of the structure. Finally, in this case, uh, 
we showed also the different uh, directivity pattern at the same frequency that we saw earlier, so at uh, 1,500 Hz. Basically, we see here in red the uh, loudspeaker, the uh, speaker driver as isolated, whereas when it is mounted, we see the different pattern that we have uh, on the base of the different internal structure of the vented box. Okay, now we can go on with the um, demo case, the loudspeaker, that's uh, the sensitivity analysis of the loudspeaker. To this aim, uh, let me first introduce a little bit the loudspeaker. So what is a loudspeaker? A loudspeaker is a device that allows to convert an electrical audio signal into a corresponding sound. Now, Aftran is used to determine the transfer function between the force that is applied to the voice coil the pressure around the loudspeaker. So we are missing the uh, electromagnetic part. To this same, we will use, in this case, the tilde small parameters in order to model the electrical part and the coupling with the magnet. Afterwards, we can post-process all these results in order to get the, um, the voltage to the acoustic transfer function that is actually what we want to know in case of a loudspeaker, when we want to analyze the uh, sensitivity analysis of a, of a loudspeaker, for example. In Actron, to this same, we have two different, two different approaches. The first approach is the application of an equivalent force and a spring to model the electromagnetic component. The advantage of this approach is that it is easier to model multiple loudspeakers to understand their interaction. The second approach is the solution of an equivalent electric circuit where Actron is used to compute the loudspeaker vibroacoustic impedance, then an equivalent electrical circuit is solved to compute the Lorentz force and then scale correctly uh, the results. Indeed, Actron is a linear solver, so its solution can be always scaled later on. The advantage in this case is that uh, we can uh, easily post-process the results with different electromagnetic valence mode parameters. So, for example, if we have different loudspeakers with the same geometry but with different TLNs more parameters, we just need to uh, post-process different, uh, differently the results. And this can be done easily by means of the scripting capability of Actron. The two approaches are exactly equivalent, and both of them use these TLNs more parameters, that is to say the DC uh, resistance, inductance, and the driver motor strength. And in addition to these two, three trillion small parameters, we will need also the voltage that is applied to the, to the loudspeaker. What is the equivalent electrical circuit that is actually solved? It is displayed here. Basically, we have the voltage that is applied to the loudspeaker. We will simply model the electrical part with uh, a series of uh, resistance and an inductance, even if even more complex uh, modeling of the electrical part are anyway possible. And this is up to the, to the user. Then this is the equivalent uh, impedance of the, uh, of the um, loudspeaker, and we can solve easily this circuit by applying the ohm law to get the current that is circulating across the circuit that is also the current that is circulating in the voice coil of the loudspeaker. Now, the uh, driver motor strength times the current will give us the uh, Lorentz force that is the actual force that is applied to the loudspeaker. Now, to solve this um, circuit, what we need to know is this impedance, this equivalent fiberacoustic uh, imp uh, impedance. And we will use action to determine this impedance. So to do to this same to determine this same uh, this uh, impedance, we will apply a known force F star to the uh, voice coil. Action will output the voice coil displacement due to this force, and we can then compute the equivalent electric impedance uh, by means of this formula. Once we know this, we can solve the, the, the electric circuit that we saw in the previous slide, and then we can scale all the results that we had 
according to, to this factor. Namely, we will scale the acoustic pressure by multiplying the acoustic pressure output by action by this factor. Or if you want the, um, uh, the power of the, that is dissipated, for example, inside the, the structure, we will multiply it, the output of action by the square of this factor. Okay, then I can show the demo. So this is uh, my model. This is the uh, graphical user interface of Actran. It is named Actran VI. So I loaded the uh, mesh that I built for this, uh, for this application. And we can uh, analyze this mesh component by component of this loudspeaker. So what we have, first of all, here I have a dust cup, which is made by linear elements. It's modeled by means of a thin shell. And to this same, we need to define the material that I have defined earlier and the thickness of this component. Then I choose also to um, compute the, um, the power for this, uh, for this component. And then I will select, I have selected the corresponding domain of elements, of finite elements of this uh, component. Quite similarly, I did the same for the membrane that is displayed now here, and is this component. Again, it's a thin shell, and it is made by linear elements. We have then the former that is here, and again, it's a thin shell and I have selected the corresponding material. Then we have the voice coil, which is made by copper, and in this case, it's a solid element. So in this case, I don't need to specify the thickness of this material. I just need to select the corresponding domain and select the material. Then we have also the surround that is here. In this case, I selected solid shell. Again, I do not need to specify the thickness of this component. I need just to specify uh, the material. In this case, I use uh, a TPE material, for example. And here is how you can define it in Akron. Just an example, all the, material, all the solid materials are defined in the same way, meaning that you will define the Yam modulus, the Poisson ratio, and the solid density. And if you specify an imaginary part in the YAM modulus, you can add the damping that you want this component. Okay, so we have the speaker driver, but then we have also the solid parts, the support parts. So we have these two parts that are here, and they are connected by the spider. So again, also the spider is made by thin shell with a certain thickness, and this is my solid uh, component. Now, uh, I forgot to mention that this loudspeaker, it's, uh, it's just a model that uh, I invented by myself on the basis of my experience. It is not representative of any uh, real loudspeaker. I did it on purpose for demonstration. And I wanted to do uh, an axisymmetric model. So in this case, we see a 2D model that is axisymmetric. To finalize our model, we need to set up the acoustic domains that are here, where we will compute the acoustic uh, propagation in the near field. We have also here two thin, uh, thin slits, two, uh, in air gaps where the viscothermal dissipation will occur and will be will have we will have a strong impact of those uh, of those thin slits. So these are defined by two components, two specific components where we add the viscothermal dissipation. So we just need to select the um, the specific component, viscothermal uh, fluid component, the material, the type of uh, model used for this uh, to the same, and the thickness of these thin slits. And as well, as usual, for actron components, the corresponding domain. 
Okay, so this model now allows us to compute everything in the near field, but as I mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, when we are dealing with the sensitivity analysis of a loudspeaker, we might want to have the results in the far field. So to this same, we need infinite elements, and indeed, I use those here and here. So here in red, we have the two infinite elements components to get the propagation towards the top in the far field and towards the bottom in the, uh, in the far field as well. Now, why did I use two different infinite elements? Uh, this is because in this case, I assume that this loudspeaker is uh, mounted on a very rigid plate, and this is modeled by a specific boundary condition at those uh, linear elements and it is displayed here. So, the infinite elements, the first infinite elements on the top, will allow us to compute the, um, the acoustic propagation in the far field to get the results to a number of virtual microphones that are uh, to an array of virtual microphones, and these are displayed here. Oh. The, position at one meter of distance. Whereas, so this is the use of the infinite elements on the top, whereas the infinite elements on the bottom are used in order to, so these infinite elements are used to allow the acoustic propagation, the acoustic wave to propagate and not being reflected by the uh, finite element domain boundary. Then we need to apply the correct boundary conditions. First of all, I set up specific a zero displacement boundary condition, and I set up the zero displacement boundary condition here and here in order to fix the loudspeaker. Then I fixed, as mentioned in the previous slides, I needed to load the voice coil with a specific force, and I did it by means of these uh, distributed loads. It is applied on the voice coil, and it is directed towards the um, Y direction. Whereas I applied also in, uh, in the opposite direction another uh, distributed load, and it is applied to this surface in order to, as we generate one force, that is the Lorentz force, and also we have a reaction force, and this is important when we have a structure that is loaded and connected to other structure, as for example in the um, in a in car audio application. What are the outputs then that we need from this uh, analysis? As I said, we need the uh, to compute the far field noise propagation at those uh, points. Then I set up also to get an output map to get the, uh, all the computed values in this uh, finite element domain. I set up another field map to get a 3D values, 3D values on, um, on these uh, surfaces. And finally, I have a field map to compute the acoustic pressure on this surface which is distant one meter from the, from the loudspeaker, as well as on a plane surface that is on this, uh, on this plane in order to watch and see what is the actual propagation of the uh, acoustic pattern. The final thing that I want from this, um, from this analysis is the solid displacement of the voice coil. We have applied a force at the voice coil and then we are computing at a node of the voice coil. Sorry, the voice coil is not displayed. So we wanted to compute this point that is belonging to the voice coil. We want to compute the solid displacement in order to compute the impedance of the loudspeaker. So the uh, analysis is finalized. What I did, I bid a script in order to do all the post-processing, so once it is run, I will run this script. I will not uh, describe everything. It is, uh, from the theoretical point of view, it's all described in the, in the past slides. But if you want, this script is uh, available, and I can forward it to you later on after this uh, webinar. 
We will get then all the results from this analysis. The first result that we can plot is the uh, acoustic maps, for example, or the structural maps in order to understand what's going on. So I will hide this. I already um, loaded all the results in, our, in the graphical user interface. The first result that I want to show is the acoustic pressure that is computed. In this case, it's the pressure at 231 hertz, for example. What we have is that we see here a very high pressure. This is due to the spider of this loudspeaker that in this case, and just for demonstration purposes, it's perfectly reflecting. Now, the effect is that this is causing a very high acoustic pressure here, and so it, co it is causing the air to pass through these two slits and go out in this direction. Now, as here we have strong viscodissipation effects, we see the damping of the acoustic wave through these two slits. So this is one effect that we need to take into account in this case. Another map that we can uh, see is that, for example, a field map. So it's in the far field, for example. So we will see the acoustic propagation in this direction at different frequencies, for example. And so, by doing so, we can analyze and understand how the acoustic, um, the acoustic transmission and radiation is uh, performed. Then we can also analyze the structural, um, the structural um, results. So for example, we can, let's hide these two maps and display this map. So this is the structural displacement at different frequencies. So let's go at a lower frequency where we have the piston mode, for example, and it is here. So what we see is actually on the structure, even if this is an axisymmetric analysis, we can compute the full 3D uh, solution of this, uh, of this problem. At the low frequency, we see the piston mode of the loudspeaker, whereas at higher frequencies, we see how the different displacement occurs of the structural elements. So this is what we have in terms of maps, example of maps from Atran. What we can see is then here, by means of the PLT viewer, we can post-process the result to get actually the sensitivity analysis of the loudspeaker. An example of the results is the computation of the complete uh, impedance of the loudspeaker. So this is the full impedance of the loudspeaker. As we see here at 100, around 100 hertz, we have the peak, and this is due to the um, connected to the first mode of the loudspeaker of the piston. Now the result that we have is the sound pressure level at one meter from the, uh, from the loudspeaker, right in front of the loudspeaker itself. And what we see is that we have an increase up to uh, 100 or uh, 200 hertz, and rather a flat response up to 2,000 hertz. And then as the higher order modes of the uh, loudspeaker structure are occurring, we have some different peaks here. Another type of results we can get from action is the uh, different power uh, distribution. So for example, we have here a plot of the powers that are uh, the total power and then the different dissipated power. So we have in blue the total power that is supplied to the loudspeaker, and we see that in light uh, in Chan, actually, we have the dissipated power due to the viscothermal dissipation, and it is mainly affecting our uh, propagation at lower frequencies. Whereas in green, we have the dissipated power in all the solid materials. Now, I have added to get this value all the dissipated power of the different components, but you can have also a breakdown of this power, of the dissipated power, into the different components uh, dissipated power to understand actually what is the actual power dissipated, for example, by the surround, the power dissipated by the spider, and so on. Whereas in red, we have the radiated power, the actually radiated power 
uh, produced by the uh, loudspeaker. And at the end, what we have is rather a flat response above 200 hertz. Finally, another result that you can get from this kind of application by means of action is a directivity plot. So this is a polar plot of all the um, results that we had at one meter from the loudspeaker and the virtual microphones. And so here you see at, in, in blue that the SPL at 100 hertz, it is uh, rather constant overall the um, directivity angles. At 1,000 hertz, again, we have rather more or less the same response at all the angles, whereas if we increase the frequency, we have mainly a radiation towards the front of the loudspeaker, whereas we have uh, less efficient radiation at the higher angles. So we can, we can conclude then this section. Uh, I've shown how action can be used in order to simulate audio devices. And Actron features a, a comprehensive uh, library of structures and acoustic components. It, it allows the full vibroacoustic coupling of the, uh, that, that is uh, typical for audio devices. And this can be done by means of the different solution uh, approaches of Actron. In, this, in the demo case, we saw the direct frequency response. But in Actron, you can use also the modal frequency response and the hybrid. Then I show how the results can be post-processed in order to have a full understanding on the physics involved. This includes the maths, the frequency response functions, and the directivity plots, for example.